Hi, my name is Rami Nagel, and this is part two of a three-part series on curing tooth decay. In this part, we're going to review the research of the dentist Weston Price. In 1931, Weston Price traveled to the beautiful Loewenschental Valley in Switzerland. All of the Loewenschental Valley make up a community of 2,000 and have been a world unto themselves. They have neither physician nor dentist because they have so little need for them. They have neither policeman nor jail because they have no need for them. The nutrition of the people of the Loewenschental Valley, particularly that of growing boys and girls, consists largely of a slice of whole rye bread and a piece of summer made cheese about as large as the slice of bread, which are eaten with fresh milk of goats or cows. The natives of the valley are able to recognize the superior quality of their June butter, and without knowing exactly why, pay it due homage. The average intake of fat-soluble activators and minerals of calcium and phosphorus would far exceed the daily intake of the average American child. Of the children still using the primitive diet, the number of cavities per person was point zero three. Weston Price writes that one stands in profound admiration before the stalwart physical development and high moral character of these sturdy mountaineers. The superior physical development of the isolated Swiss is contrasted to the pinched and shallow and even deformed faces and distorted bodies of the modernized Swiss. White flour products, marmalades, jams, canned vegetables, confections and fruits are all imported to the area and only a limited supply of local vegetables is grown locally. Weston Price examined over 2,000 teeth in the modernized district and found that 25.5 percent of these teeth had been attacked by tooth decay. Later Weston Price traveled to the islands of the Outer Hebrides off the coast of Scotland. He writes that stories have long been told of the superb health of the people living in the islands on the Outer Hebrides. The basic foods of these islanders are fish and oat products with a little barley. Oat grain is one of the cereal which develops fairly regularly, and it provides the porridge and oat cakes which in many homes are eaten in some form regularly with each meal. The fishing about the Outer Hebrides is especially favorable, and small sea foods including lobsters, crabs, oysters, and clams are abundant. An important and highly relished article of the diet has been baked cod's head stuffed with chopped cod's liver and oatmeal. On the Isle of Lewis, only 1.3 teeth out of every 100 examined have been attacked by tooth decay. On the Isle of Harris, 1%, one teeth out of every 100 has been attacked by decay. And on the Isle of Skye, for those living on primitive foods, only 0.7 teeth per 100 have been attacked by decay. Weston Price remarks, One of the sad stories of the Isle of Lewis has to do with the recent rapid progress of the White Plague. The younger generation of the modernized part of the Isle of Lewis is not showing the same resistance to tuberculosis as their ancestors. The reason why the younger generation has lost their immunity to tuberculosis has to do with a change in their nutrition. In this photograph of two brothers, you can clearly see that tooth decay is an environmental condition. The brother on the left has excellent teeth, and the one on the right, rampant tooth decay. The boys are eating at the same table. The older boy on the left with excellent teeth was still enjoying primitive foods of oatmeal and oat cake and seafoods with some limited dairy products. The younger boy, seen on the right, has extensive tooth decay. Many teeth were missing, including two in the front. He insisted on having white bread, jam, highly sweetened coffee, and also sweet chocolates. His father told me with deep, deep concern how difficult it was for this boy to get up in the morning and go to work. The typical foods available that promoted tooth decay are angel food cake, white bread, sweetened fruit juices, jams, confections of every type, canned marmalades, and canned vegetables. On the Isle of Lewis, out of about 100 individuals, approximately 25 already were wearing artificial teeth. 
In his meticulous research, Weston Price compared the nutrient levels of the modernized diet with the nutrient level of the primitive diet. He found that the modernized diet contains several times less of certain minerals like calcium and phosphorus and several times less vitamins called fat soluble vitamins. It is precisely due to the lack of the fat soluble vitamins and the lack of minerals in our modern diet that causes tooth decay. Weston Price's field studies continued beyond Switzerland and Scotland. He studied Eskimos in Alaska. He studied Indians in northern Canada. He studied Aborigines in Australia. He just studied native people throughout all of Africa. He studied islanders on various South Sea islands. He, just, he studied Indians in Peru. Throughout Weston Price's field studies, he found an overriding common theme, and that's what he named his book after. The theme is that it is our nutrition that causes physical, mental, and moral degeneration in our modern culture. One key area that Weston Price found was so lacking in our modern nutritional program was the category of foods called fat-soluble vitamins and activators. Fat-soluble vitamins are vitamins A, D, E, and K. Weston Price observed that the groups with near 100% immunity to tooth decay ate from two of the following three principal sources. Dairy products from grass-fed animals, organs and muscle meat from fish and shellfish, and organs of land animals. The groups using the fat-soluble activators in liberal quantity had no more than 0.5% of all teeth having ever been attacked by tooth decay, while those using the fat-soluble activators less liberally had up to 12% of teeth attacked by dental caries. Indigenous groups of people who ate liberally from the mineral phosphorus and liberally from foods containing the fat-soluble activators had 100% immunity to tooth decay. Our modern diet of commerce does not provide immunity to tooth decay because it is severely lacking in a variety of minerals and vitamins. How often in our culture do we eat liver and bone marrow and heart and drink blood? How often do you eat fish heads with fish organs? It is precisely because we're missing these nutrients in our modern diet that we have tooth decay. The physical degeneration that many of us experience as tooth decay is a result of our modern nutrient devoid diet. We no longer eat the foods that give us immunity to tooth decay. So we need to stop fooling ourselves and pretending like we don't know the cause of tooth decay and that tooth decay is not preventable. The cause is a nutrient deficiency and the way you prevent tooth decay is through proper nutrition. When you go to a dentist, the dentist usually shows you an x-ray of your tooth decaying and how you need a filling. The tooth on the left, you can see a dark area with a red line to it. That's a large cavity of a growing child. Below that is the tooth pulp exposed to the mouth. On the right you see the same tooth after a nutritional program. The blue line on the right points to a temporary filling. The, line, the green line in the middle points to new secondary dentin. So the tooth actually grew a new layer on this nutritional program loaded with fat soluble vitamins and activators. The yellow line points to the pulp. The pulp of the tooth is now protected. This is how we can reverse and halt tooth decay by protecting our tooth chambers. What the tooth x-ray shows us is that a special nutritional program can be used to build new layers of tooth dentin in enamel so we can heal our teeth with nutrition.